Hi there, Prairie Plant Girl here. Today I'm going to be making a delicious sweet treat. It's a great thing to give as a gift or to take when you're invited over um, and you want to bring a little appetizer or something uh, and it's pepper jelly. Now this jar here is a sweet pepper jelly. It's absolutely gorgeous. Lots of beautiful flecks of different colors of jelly in it. And this is one that I made last year. This year I'm going to make a little bit of a hotter version by simply just adding in some hot peppers to my regular pepper jelly recipe. This recipe is super simple to make, requires very few ingredients. You don't even need a canning pot or anything like that. Just, you know, a regular cooking pot, you need a very large pot. Doesn't seem like it when you have the ingredients, but you'll need a large pot um, because the mixture, the sugary mixture will, will bubble up quite high. Um, just a couple of uh, peppers, uh, some Powdered fruit pectin, I'm using um, the Certo brand, but I believe there's other brands that you could use, and you just need a box of that. You need some regular uh, crystallized sugar, table sugar type thing, and some apple cider vinegar. So I'll put the recipe down below so you can have a look at it um, if you're interested in making this. I'm gonna be making it this year in these sweet little jars uh, so that I can easily give them away as gifts. It's just a nice size jar because you don't need very much. It's really good. A great way to use this is um, to get like a soft cheese. Like I like a cream cheese um, uh, and then you just you put a little bit of cheese on a plate and you soften it up, put some of this on top and then I like to just soften it again. You can just do that easily in the microwave and then just serve it with some um, some crackers. You want a, a good hearty cracker that's you know going to be able to kind of scoop that up you know and, and hold the weight of it but um it's a really good combination um people also like to use it as uh like a glaze uh when ro uh, roasting meat or barbecuing meat um or just a little bit on the side almost like a dip for you know chicken strips or something like that so it's a delicious versatile little treat and we're going to make it today so let's get going there's the the recipe real quick, the ingredients. I have this off a, a card. I don't think this company's in business anymore, um, but I've been using this recipe for several years and I really like it. Okay, so I've got my supplies all here and ready. This recipe calls for two large red peppers, one large green pepper, and these are bell peppers, and then, um, if you want to make it hotter, it suggests adding in, you know, a hot pepper to the mix or as many as you want. So I rarely have um, bell peppers that are red and ripe and ready to, to go when I want to make this. So I just use an assortment of sweet peppers that I have and I like to get a nice color assortment and I just make it to the equivalent of um, the amounts on here. So I have in the past chopped, measured out a large green pepper, and I've come to the conclusion that uh, chopped into fairly fine pieces is about a cup of peppers. So then I just go through this and um, I need about three quarters of a cup to do this, and then I'll add in some, um, some hot peppers on top of that. So that's what I'm gonna do with these. So I'll start with the uh, more colorful peppers and then I'll finish up with some green ones and then these are Sugar Rush Peach. This is actually a Antoy Romanian. I have a candy cane. This is a lipstick and these are just green bell peppers. I'm not sure which variety. So when I get to the hot peppers, I'm going to put some gloves on uh, so that I don't uh, get any of those oils on my hands and then burn my hands or my face or anything later. But I do find it a little bit trickier to chop with the gloves on, so I'm going to start without them. Uh, so I have some beautiful colors of peppers here. And I'm just going to chop them up, like I said, till I get about three quarters of a cup. And then I'm going to actually chop them quite small in my little mixer here. So 
So there, that got me right around the three quarter of a cup mark there. So I'm gonna put those into my little blender here. Remember to get my gloves on. I think the flavor of the, the sugar rush peach pepper will complement this very nicely. Um, the, the recipe had suggested three or four jalapenos But I think the flavor of the sugar rush peach being kind of that more of a fruity pepper will add a nicer flavor to this than the jalapenos would. But I'll just put two in because they're a lot stronger than the jalapenos. Now I want to get rid of this pepper stuff. This is my immersion blender that I used. You may have seen in a recent video doing tomato sauce, pasta sauce. And it has this little dish that comes with it, and you just hook that on. And it turns it into this little mini chopper. Now you don't want to like totally pulverize these, you just want them into some nice little bits. So that almost has it right now. I'm just gonna give it one little. And that's really all you want. You could do that with your knife to get that real nice fine chop, but I just like using my little chopper and then I'm not getting the, especially with the hot peppers, I'm not getting that all over you. But look at all that beautiful color in there. This is gonna be gorgeous. Now that we have our peppers all nicely chopped, we can uh, work on the actual jelly part of this. So we're gonna add in our peppers. Get rid of that blade. apple cider vinegar. So we need two cups of that. And our box of powdered pectin. I'm actually going to get a long spatula because uh, this stuff will really bubble up and uh, it's hot. It, it, hurt, it can hurt your hands. So just over a medium high heat, we're going to bring it to a boil. And then once it boils, we're just going to boil it for one minute before adding the sugar. Look at that gorgeous color in there with all those beautiful colors of peppers. Always looks so nice. It looks nice in the jar to give it as a gift. And it looks nice on the plate, like I said, or some cheese or, you know, as an accompaniment to a meat dish. One of my favorite ways to preserve peppers is this jelly. So I'm just gonna bring it, I'm just gonna bring it up to that boil and I'll bring you back when it's time to add the sugar. Okay, so our mixture has boiled for a minute here. And now we're gonna add our sugar. So this is six cups of sugar. I didn't say this was health food. So we just need to stir this until it's all dissolved. And this is the point where you really would need to be careful and keep an eye on it because it will boil. It can really boil up on you. Don't use a small pot. It doesn't seem like many ingredients, but trust me, this is experience talking, it will boil up high. So what we want to do now that all the sugar is stirred in and blended in is bring it up to a boil, um, still over medium high heat, and uh, we want it to get to 220 degrees Fahrenheit on an instant read thermometer. So I just use thermometer like this and 
and it's easy. I can get the tip in without touching the bottom of the pot and just check the temperature now and then. While this is uh, doing its thing, I am heating some jars in the oven. Uh, they're washed and cleaned um, in the dishwasher on sterilized setting, but I like to get them nice and warm before I'm putting this hot liquid into them. And I also have the, the two-piece snap lids um, with some hot water. So everything will be ready to go when this is. So now I'm just going to let it sit there and come up to that uh, temperature, checking it every once in a while. It'll take about six to ten minutes to come up to temperature. So we're getting close now. We're at about, about 205, 210, 215. Let's make sure the temperature is all even all around. Carefully don't burn yourself on the steam. You could use a candy thermometer for this. I just like this thermometer. Let's see how the bubbles are getting kind of foamy now. It's getting taller. Very close now. 219.6. Okay, so now we can uh, take it off the heat and get it in the jars. So I'm just going to grab my jars out of the oven real quick. And I just set them on this tray. It makes it easier to move them in and out of the oven. And if I spill when I'm filling them, it's not a big deal. So you you can use a, a funnel like this, or you can just put it straight into the jars. Um, it's entirely up to you. You want to get it within a quarter inch of the top of the jar, which is about there. This looks so beautiful. It smells delicious. Okay, so they're all filled to about a quarter of an inch. And I just want to wipe the jar lids. Now I have a little bit left over. This recipe is actually formulated to make eight eight ounce or 500 milliliter, I mean 200 milliliter jars. Um, and these are 125 mil jars or four ounce jars. So, I figured I'd have a little bit left over, but I like this size better for gift giving and even just, you don't use a whole big jar very often, so it's nice to be able to open one. So I'm just wiping the rims with some vinegar and a dishcloth just to make sure I don't have anything sticky on the edges and I'm just using distilled white vinegar for this. You just don't want any of that sticky sauce on there or you might not get a good seal with your lid. If you don't get a good seal you just need to keep them in the refrigerator and use them from there. You can't store them you know, on a shelf somewhere. And they do get sticky. I'll have to wipe the whole jars down probably. I probably have syrup down the sides of the jars, but to get the lids on, that's all we need. So just set the sealer ring on there nicely. A 
a magnetic lifter like this really is helpful um, for these jar lids because they're in hot water right now. I've heard that these jar lids now that you don't have to put them in hot water um, to get a good seal, but I still always do. So I'm just going to go and make each jar finger tight. And the jars are hot. These jars will just need to sit now for about 24 hours just to make sure um, that they've sealed properly. So you'll know they've sealed properly when the little um, button in this uh, jar goes down. Sometimes you'll hear that little pop sound and then you'll know they're ready. So just leave them undisturbed, don't move them and jiggle them around a whole bunch for 24 hours and then once that's up just go around and feel them and if it makes that popping sound when you touch the top it wasn't sealed properly stick it in your refrigerator use those jars up first um, any that are sealed properly which hopefully is all of them uh, can just go in you know a nice dark cool place and store for about a year and that's all there is to making this pepper jelly and it's such a delicious treat it looks impressive if you take it over to to share or bring it out when you have guests over and it's an impressive gift to gift as well, gift to give as well. So um, if you have never tried this before, I really suggest that you give it a try. And if you do, let me know how it goes. I had this much left over. Like I said, the recipe calls for a little bit bigger jars, but because they're not being processed and sterilized or like in a can or anything, I don't need to really worry about that as much. And uh, I'll just pop this in the fridge and I can use it up first. I'll, I'll just... Uh, you know, enjoy snacking on this and that way I'll be able to have a a little taste of it right away here. You can see how beautiful it is. You know, when the light shines through, all those colors, the peppers are all suspended in there. It's absolutely gorgeous and beautiful. And it looks stunning on a, an appetizer tray. So give it a try. Let me know how it goes. Thanks for watching. Bye.